There are lots of situations as a blacksmith when you need to make a stand of some sort, perhaps for fireplace tools, a candle holder, maybe even a big floor size candle stand for a church or something like that. And one of the more elegant ways to do that, in my mind anyways, is a simple three-legged stand like this that requires a forge weld in the middle to hold the legs together. So today I thought we'd take a look at making just this base. We're not going to make a finished product out of it today. Mostly just to see how this forge weld is done and how you get the legs spread evenly so that it's symmetrical. In a future video, we'll then take a look at a finished product that uses this for the stand. It's a nice brisk 20 degree morning in the shop, so let's light a fire and get to work. Now one of the first things your mind probably thinks of when you think of a three-legged stand like this is that you actually have three pieces of material that you have to bring together and weld. That's not the case. I have a long piece and a short piece and I will weld this into the middle, sort of a T-weld, except I'll get this shape so it's starting to look like what I want it to before I do the weld, so that once the weld is done, most of that shaping is also done. So the material that I'm starting with is quarter by three quarter, so that should be what, six millimeter by 20 millimeter roughly. And the long piece, I cut two feet. I think that's more than I need. So that's 620 millimeters. Probably I'm going to cut these off to make sure they're all exactly the same length after I'm done with the weld. But I do want to make sure I've got enough material to get the weld easily before I make things too small to work with. So one of the first things I want to do is put a center punch mark in the middle of this bar so I know where to bend it. Find your center punch mark. I need to. My heat was a little off, so I'm bending not right where I want it, so I'm going to bring my heat down into here a little bit. At this stage, I'm just going to take a piece of soapstone and mark an angle on my anvil here. This is 120 degrees and that should give me a nice tripod. So I can open up where I've over bent it a little bit. That gives me a chance to refine this edge. And it's going to open some when we do the the weld, so I don't want to make it all the way open at this point. Yeah, it's pretty good for now. Like I say, I'm going to mess with that some later. I'm going to draw this corner out just a little. And that becomes the scarf for our weld. So these go together like that, and that's what will form our three-legged stand. Now a weld like this is often referred to as a drop the tongs weld, because you will sometimes come to the anvil, set the first piece down, put the second piece on top, and then drop this pair of tongs to pick up your hammer. I'm gonna see if I can cool these off enough that I can pick them up and hand hold them, and I think if I wear a hot mill glove, I might be able to get away with that 
and that will eliminate one little problem in the weld. But it's worth practicing this if you're going to do it with tongs and you need to drop the tongs. Do it cold several times and make sure you've got that motion down before you bring it up to welding heat. After you've done a few hundred of these, you may not need to rehearse it so often. You want to watch both pieces. One of them might heat more than the other, so you might have to move them around in the fire to get them to heat evenly. And if you touch them in the fire and they start to stick, they're pretty close to welding heat. Sparking heat is just a little bit too high. A few sparks won't hurt. My flux actually has iron in it, so sometimes you'll see sparks from the flux, which is not the same as burning your material. Reflux and we'll go back into the fire. That hole then will attach whatever goes on this stand. This then also illustrates where a coal forge can have a considerable advantage over a gas forge. There is no way I was going to get this back into a gas forge to refine the weld or to punch that hole. So if you can do it all in one heat, you could have done this in a gas forge, but once you get this other leg on there, you've kind of worked yourself out of that gas forge. And that's one reason, even though I work in a gas forge most of the time, I still keep the coal forge around because it allows me to do things like this much more efficiently. Although I recently have seen some induction forge videos that had open-sided coils that would probably work for this and you'd be able to just bring it in the side of the coil to heat that up and it'd be a very refined heat and they were doing some forge welding in coils like that. So that's really intriguing if I ever win the lottery and buy an induction forge. So now I have to decide what do I want this to look like? What are my legs going to look like? And you can do this ahead of time. I'm mostly trying to illustrate this weld. So exactly what happens to the legs isn't as important. But I think these are longer than I would want for the three quarter inch width. So I'm going to measure from my center point and I'm going to cut all three legs off exactly the same. And I think I will probably go about eight inches from the center point. And of course these will get some work done to them so they'll actually stretch out a little bit more. I think the weld was easier to get with the longer pieces. And who knows, it might be big enough to make some bottle openers out of or something. With the legs all cut to the same length, I want to go ahead and flare these out a little bit so I'm going to be drawing them out thinner in the thickness but letting them get wider in the width portion. And that should make a nice little scroll in for the feet on this. Once those are all the same length, I'll shape those scrolls and then we'll shape the legs. And that's really all there is to the stand part. Still a fair amount of work but nothing too technically difficult. 
The key is try to keep everything the same at every step and it's more likely to sit straight when you're done. Make sure it's straight. Put a mark on the edge of my anvil right here so I know how long the first one was.
I'm just using a piece of pipe and a bending fork to get the shape. The diameter of the pipe just depends on how wide of a base you want on your stand. This one happens to be four and a half inches. Well, that's pretty much all there is to making the three-legged base, but chances are it's not going to sit perfectly flat so that whatever's mounted to it is straight up and down in the air. The legs are probably a little bit twisted, and probably they're going to need to be adjusted a little bit in the angles, although it looks pretty good right now. So that's the next thing to do is to take care of any twists in the legs, and take care of making sure that all the angles are correct. And then after I make whatever mounts to this, which is still a secret, we'll worry about getting everything perfectly plumb and level. Now two out of these three legs are pretty nice and straight. They're not twisted, but this one's got a bit of a twist in it. I think it was the third one we bent, and these were kind of in my way, so I didn't get as good a curve on here. So I'm gonna heat this up. We'll hold this in the vise up here and then we'll be able to just straighten that. That should be real quick and easy. Doesn't take much. That looks a lot better. Okay, that looks much better. Now I just want to double check it and make sure my spacing and my angles for the three legs are all the same. And I've got something I welded up just for doing that. And this is just a matter of getting it centered on here and checking the legs and trying to decide if they're off, which one is off. This one actually comes out in the center, this one comes out in the center, this one's a little off, so I need to bring it this direction. Hopefully I can just do that right here. It doesn't take much and the reality is probably nobody would ever notice it if it's off just a tiny bit. We'll see if we can get it right anyways. It's actually getting pretty close. I think I'm happy with that. I can tell this tips a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and straighten that leg out. And that looks better, and we'll, we'll have to look at that again later. Now making sure that all the legs are straight and whatever is standing on the stand is perfectly upright has to wait until the whole thing is assembled. And I do have something in mind for this, but you're going to have to tune in next week if you want to see what that is. In the meantime, I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop. But stay safe, wear your safety glasses, and we'll see you for the next one.